I just would watch NBA games and would watch like the Sunday doubleheader and I remember it being like Kobe and Shaq and you know whatever game was next and I watched those games and then immediately want to go outside and so if it was snow on the ground it was like I would shovel before those games then it would kind of maybe the sun would hit and it would melt a little bit and then after the games I would go out and play and if it was dark I was able to always rig like a, a couple lights and my parents would always say like, make sure the lights aren't shining in the neighbors windows and that kind of thing shooting was something that I did so repetitiously and would spend in eighth grade two three hours a day shooting which I think then became my routine and then I set a goal for myself to make 300 shots every day after school when I would come home from school and so that meant to me basically come home get something to eat finish my homework and then no matter the conditions if it was cold if it was snowing if it was 100 degrees I would just put my radio on you know I'd have my cassette tape that I had recorded like the top eight at eight the night before and I'd play it and I would just shoot and at the time that would take me about two and a half hours basically to, to make 300 and like layups didn't count and free throws didn't count so it was really just me shooting and going to get my rebound and running back out and shooting again and of course three-pointers are really the most fun shot to shoot if you're gonna be by yourself so that's mostly what I shot really once I got my license things kind of changed I think you're sort of in bike mode until you have your license so you just wrangle the people in the neighborhood and you play wherever but once you have a license and you get to a certain age that you're in high school and the fact that my dad was actually a teacher and a coach at the high school my dad was shutting the school down he was alarm he was putting the alarm code in and shutting the building down and so after a while I realized I have a license and basically I'm watching my dad code in and code out every day literally first and last to the school so I knew what the code was I knew you had like one minute to set it and get out or once you got in you had one minute to, to turn the code off and I knew what it was from watching we started to sneak into the gym and I'm pretty sure my dad knew because I would take the keys that were his separate school keys and he had to have needed them at some point so he knew and I'm pretty sure it was more like a just don't get caught kind of thing Starting in, I would always basically do three spots where I would just make three. So I was shooting three on the right wing, three in the middle in the lane, and three on the left. And then I would do twos, and I would make two from each wing, and I would go two from the corner, two from the wing, two from the top wing, and corner again. Back to Novak, open three is Chiching! Everybody always asks me, when you shoot the ball like free throws or three pointers, what do you look at? And I have no idea what anyone's talking about. I really don't. And people I've heard, like great shooters have answers. Like, I always looked at the back of the rim or I looked at the front. I, ch I like would challenge that because that's impossible. If you're standing in the corner over here or you're in the corner over there or you're at the top over here, there's no way you can be picking a different spot every time. And if you're picking the same spot, then depending where you're standing, it's totally irrelevant. So I think those people are liars and they've been convinced they were looking at something. I found that you make shots based on your muscle memory, which is partially muscle and definitely from the repetitions in your mind, men mental preparation. I think that shooting routine that I would do every game day that would get me ready for the game is what made me make shots. I grew up thinking at a younger age that it was kind of all upper body, all follow through, was my elbow tucked under, was everything perfect, but I think as I spent time it was very clear to me that your shot is a rhythm action. It really, for me, was a one, two step. So it was almost like a little bounce into your shot. It started with your, your feet, went to your knees, was just this rhythm, and that essentially the ball should be almost being caught and moved right along with that same motion so that once you kind of jumped and were shooting, the ball should kind of pop right out the top of your shot. Because any hitches were hard to adjust to if you were in the first quarter and you were fresh, or in the fourth quarter you were tired. They go to the shooter. Bingo, plus one. Right. Steve Novak has a career high 19. I mean, it is in sports, and you hear so many people talk about it, like such a powerful thing. And I think it's so hard to be in the zone. And then if you realize you're in the zone, it's so hard to stay in that place. And I think that's really the ultimate goal is to try to start out the game feeling good, make a few shots, get comfortable. And then as you see it go through the rim and as you see yourself make shots, you start to get confident and believe that you can make shots. And being in the zone is really like, I feel like a coming together of, you've put the work in to be able to have the right form and to make shots. But your belief and your confidence is 
certainly the most powerful thing you have. And so I think the zone is really when like those two things come together and it's almost like nothing can be told to you that can make you waver about the fact that you're going to make the next shot. Doing what he does best, taking the ball to the basket. And this is really what he does best, shooting the ball.